welcome to Dead of Winter, and we're playing the expansion called The Long Night. Uh, so for this video, I will go through the base rules of the game, and then a separate video for the expansions of The Long Night. It looks like there's a lot of gameplay mechanics, but the actual gameplay is fairly simple. Um, the idea is to ensure that your resources are stopped um, in the colony section and search all these individual areas for items such as food. Um, we obviously have individual crises and you need to complete your objective before the rounds reach zero uh, or morale reaches zero. So the easiest way to explain this game is with the handy player guide which gives you information of the player's turns and the colony phase. I'll explain the round summary gameplays and then I'll explain the player actions. So first of all, every player chooses two survivors at random and they choose one to put as their group leader and a follower. So I have chose Rosa Rodriguez, the prison guard. You can see her influence here is quite high at 67. That's her attacking ability. So as long as she rolls or uses a die that's two or plus, her attack will be successful. She's not so great at searching, so she needs a four or plus on her action die. My second character is Rocco Bellini. He's a father. His influence is not so good. He's good at attacking and bad at searching. You also get special abilities on the character sheets. Uh, if this one's active in the colony, it says if there is at least one helpless survivor token at the colony, reduce the number of zombies placed in the colony during the add zombie step of the colony phase by two. Um, obviously different characters have different abilities um, and depend whether they're in colony or non-colony. For instance, Razor can kill a zombie at any location and doesn't have to roll for exposure, uh, which is quite useful. But I will explain that in a second. So first of all, you have the player's turn. So the first player goes, it's normally the one with the highest influence on the board. They get this lovely first player token. Uh, in the original game, this moved around as such. In the Long Night expansion, Players are allowed to call a vote to see whether this token gets past the next player. The reason for that is there's a possibility for a betrayer. Each player will get a secret objective, which they are not allowed to reveal to the other players. Um, this secret objective has to be completed for you to win the game. Um, bear in mind, you also got to make sure you don't lose morale or lose a round token and complete a, a, a cooperative objective here. There is a possibility for a betrayer, as in a pile before the start of the game, for the number of players, they get dealt two non-objective cards. Then in that same pile, you get a single betrayal card shoved into the same pile. So this means for three players you get dealt six non-objective cards and one betrayal gets shuffled in that same pile. This pile is then dealt out to the players which means there's a possibility for a betrayer and there's also a possibility of no one having a betrayer. You can deal one non-betrayer non objective and one single betrayal in the same way. So you'd have, so for three players, you'd have three non-betrayal objectives and one single betrayal. This will greatly increase your odds of a betrayer. Of course, there is variance where you don't have to include any betrayal items. On to the main gameplay. So each player gets a a handy handy guide 
The first item is to reveal the crisis card. So this is the crisis card. You reveal that. And for this one is Morning Frost. So the food must equal number of non-exiled players. So since we're playing with three players, we need free food discarded from players' hands into the crisis contribution. And on the fail, each survivor at the colony, which is this little section here in your occupants, gets a frostbite wound and help the survivors come unruly, which I will come to later. This is not good for your morale. Free food dealt successfully, you will not fail. And the card is complete. There is also sometimes optional objectives, which says add two additional food cards. So a total of five to gain one morale. Adding morale will greatly help the speed of the game as things can change fairly quickly. Once the crisis is, is revealed, the player to the active player's right reveals a crossroad card and reads it out loud. There is a italicized text, which here is if a human survivor the player controls shares a location with a human survivor and other player controls. And there are only the two survivors at the location. Uh, this applies to the active player, uh, but this card is read by the player to the right. If the italicized text is met, then the card is read out aloud and often has a option where as each affected player gets to vote with a thumbs up option having one effect and a thumbs down having another effect. There's also options for split votes as well. This is done for every player and it's specific to the player, whereas the crisis is specific to the round. So all three players go in, in a free player game. You also have this objective to complete, which all players must work towards. That's the crisis revealed. And now we roll the action dice, which are here. So we've rolled these already as a six, a one and a four. And we'll come to what the action dice do in the player turns as indicated here. Now we go on to the player turns. So the first player of this lovely token goes first. They complete their actions, which I will explain in a second. And then each player around the board will complete their actions. Once that is done, there is a colony phase. In the colony phase, the first thing that must be done is to pay food. Food is paid into this so it can be paid into the food supply and it can be paid into the crisis contribution for the food supply you need to half the number of players or survivors in the colony rounded up and that must be met otherwise morale is lost there's six players here so we need three food tokens One, two three which we have so morale does not drop, does not increase either. We also must check the waste, which is the waste pile here. For each 10 cards, a morale is lost. So we will count these out now. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. This means morale goes down one. The moment this reaches zero, the objective cannot com be completed and the gameplay ends. You can still win your secret objective providing you have done this before the morale tracker reaches zero. Then we resolve the crisis. So for this crisis, we need food equal to the number of non exiled players. There is no food here, so this is a fail. And on a fail, we resolve the failed card there. It often results in losing morale. Uh, in this case, you get a frostbite wound. 
If a player gets free wound tokens or frostbite tokens, they are considered dead. And your secondary player becomes the group's follower. There are some, some game effects, and if you run out of survivors, where further survivors are drawn from this pile here. All the items that have been collected, if both survivors are dead, get discarded, which means the player effectively has to start from scratch. Now we move on to the add zombies phase. So for adding zombies, there's two places. First of all, we start with the colony. So for the colony, you need to add a zombie for every two survivors. We've got four survivors here, so we need to add two zombies. Zombies get added in each space in order, so they get added to one, to two, and you follow this round and repeat if needed. If a section is full, as, as so, and you're requested to add another zombie, this zombie cannot come in because this entryway is overrun. You remove this zombie from play and you kill the survivor here with the lowest influence. Rocco Bellini has 21, so he is instantly killed. This applies for any of the further survivors or non-player controlled survivors that are in the colony. You also have a second place to add zombies. For each survivor not in the colony, a zombie appears. So in this case, there's a zombie at the police station and there's also a zombie at the grocery store. They spawn on the biohazard points. There are situations where there may be a barricade, as indicated so. In this case, if a zombie it would be put on a barricade spot, you remove the zombie from play and remove the barricade that is now destroyed. There are also noise to tokens. If noise tokens are here, you flip them like a coin, and if it lands on the exclamation side, you then add a further zombie. Once that is done, you check the main objective to see if you are completed, and then you pass the first player token. Or, with the Long Night expansion, you may vote to pass the first player token. This is especially useful if you suspect the player going next might be a betrayer. That's the round summary complete. That is a general gameplay, and now we'll go through the individual player turns. For player turns, there are actions that require the action die, which I'll explain in a second, and actions that do not require an action die. You're allowed to complete as many of these as, as you wish in one round, providing you follow the rules regarding action dies. So we'll go from the top. The first option is to attack. Uh, players can uh, control the survivor can either attack a zombie or a survivor, but they must be in the same location. If they are attacking the zombie, they must be an action die equal or higher than their attack. So I'm using Rocco Bellini to attack a zombie, so he cannot spend this action die. However, he can spend the four or a six, so he's going to spend the four, which gets moved to the used action die. This instantly kills the zombie, gets removed from play. Because he's killed a zombie, he must roll the exposure die. The exposure die here has three different icons. The one for frostbite, the one for a wound. There are blank spaces and there's also the bitten symbol. If a player is bitten, they are infected with the zombie virus. If a survivor is infected with a zombie virus, the player has two options. The player can immediately kill that survivor 
and stop the bite effect spreading. They also may roll the exposure die again, which is blank. On the blank result, the survivor that the bite effect spread to is not killed and the bite effect stops spreading. On any other result, such as a frostbite or wound, the bite effect kills the current, uh, current player survivor. The bite effect spreads to any other survivors at the same location. So in this case, he is fine. But if, if he rolled a different die, such as a wound or a frostbite, he'd be removed from the game and it would spread to the other survivor at this location, which may be another player. As you can attack survivors, there are slightly different rules, which we'll go through now. Attacking a survivor works differently. They must spend an action die equal or above their attack, but then they roll that die. The player making an attack must roll lower, must roll equal or lower to the player's attack number. In this case, it's a one. So the player he's attacking gets a wound. The player attacking then gets to take a single card from the player's hand at random, but they do not roll an exposure die. The second player action is to search, but you must spend an action die equal or above their search. This can be done for each player, providing the player is at their the corresponding locations. If he spends the six, it's above his above his search ability. This allows him to draw a single card from here, which is an event card. So add the top card of survivor deck to your following and place the match and sadly at the colony. Add one helpless survivor token to the colony. This means you have a third third survivor to control Nadia Rivers a police woman but of course adds extra survivors to the colony which means you need more food and must ensure your waste is managed more correctly if the player is still at the location they're allowed to search further without spending an action die to do so they must put a noise token. They're allowed to put, they're allowed to search up to four times, in which case they draw, so for instance, if they draw search another two times, they're allowed to look at both cards, but they're only allowed to pick one. Of course, this adds noise, which in turn adds more zombies, as explained earlier. So a player can place a barricade. They can do that by spending an action die of any number, but they can only place a barricade at the location they're in. So Rico spends an action die of one, which allows him to place a barricade in the entryway of the police station, hopefully buying him some time. He has no more action dice to spend, so unfortunately, he cannot go anymore. But players can also clean waste by spending an action die of any number, but they're only allowed to remove the first three cards. As explained earlier, for each 10 cards in this pile, at the end of the colony phase, morale will drop. Players also may attract zombies. They do this by spending an action die of any result. And this allows them to move two zombies from any location to their current location. So if Rico was to spend an action die to attract, he could move these two zombies into the police station. This means there is less zombies in the colony and they may help to stop it being overrun. There are a number of other actions that do not require an action die. This means they can be done multiple times 
up until when the player feels they have best utilized. As many times as a player likes during their turn, they're allowed to play a card. For instance, if they have a fuel or fire, they can play this card when moving a survivor. Or they can play this card to kill a zombie at their current location. This allows them to kill the zombie without rolling exposure. Also allows them to move without exposure. Once they've played the item, it must go back onto the waste pile. They're allowed to do this as many times as they want during one go. A player can also add one or more cards from his hand they are equipped to survivors he controls to the crisis contributions. The cards are placed in the crisis contribution face down. When resolving the crisis, any cards matching the symbol increase the count by one. Any cards that do not match the symbol decrease the count by one as well. So this means if you have three food tokens, but one waste token, it means your food only equals two. If there is three non-exile players, this means you would fail the crisis contribution. The face down cards are shuffled before the crisis is resolved to help prevent identifying the betrayer. You can move a survivor that you control, but only once per turn. Every time you move, you must roll the exposure die and resolve the effect. For instance, a player that just moved gets a frostbite. If a player is running out of action die, they may spend a food token from the food supply. This increases the unused action die by one and allows them to respend as necessary. Bear in mind, if there's not enough food at the end of the colony phase, your morale will drop. A player on his or her turn may request a item card or more item cards from another player. If they do this, the card must be revealed and immediately played. The requested card cannot be added to the crisis. So for instance, if they requested the fuel or fire card they can, and the player is willing to give it, they can take it and immediately use it. They may obviously allow to do this many times as they want, but this reduces the amount of cards you can play to the crisis contribution and the amount of waste you have. During his or her turn, a player may have a survivor he controls with an equipped item. They may hand that off to another survivor, providing they are at the same location. When an item is handed off, it is unequipped from the current player and equipped to the survivor it's being handed to, which may be another player. If an item has a once per round ability and has already been used that round, it cannot be used again by handing it off to another survivor. You have to wait until the next round for it to be used. You can also allowed to vote to exile players. So if you're suspicious of a player that thinks they're a betrayer, you're allowed to call a vote to exile. Voting is done with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Majority rules. And in the result of a tie, the player that holds the first player token resolves the tie. If a player is exiled, they are removed from the colony into a location of their choice. They must reveal or pick up an exiled card. They then follow, follow the text on this exiled card. If you are not the betrayer, reveal your secret objective and tell all players to remove it from the game. Your new secret objective is this. This new secret objective, they must not reveal to the players. There are some further rules for exiled players and exiled players cannot add cards to the crisis. And when an exiled player is directed to add helpless survivor tokens to the colony, these tokens are not added. If the exiled player plays a survivor item card to add a survivor to the game, it is placed in a non-colony location. The exiled player cannot spend food tokens to increase his action die results, but he may play food cards, such as the gear, to increase his action die by one for each food card played, rather than carrying out the effect on the food card. The exiled player cannot vote, and the colony does not lose morale when a survivor 
that's been exiled dies. And when an exiled player plays a card, it does not go into the waste pile and gets removed from the game instead. There are further rules for the Long Night expansion, which we will go over in a separate video. And that is Dead of Winter. As, as said a few times during the video, there are, are special rules for the expansion, which we'll keep in a separate video. The rules I explained today cover both Dead of Winter and the Long Night expansion, other than the option to, to move the first player token. So hopefully you've been enjoying this series. Remember to leave a like, subscribe. If you subscribe, hit the bell to get notified of our upcoming videos. Keep updated on our Facebook and Twitter page. And I'll see you next time as I go through the rules of the Long Night expansion.